modern era of the video game industry, Arc System Works and Capcom have both made a name for themselves as game developers who are obsessed with two things, anime and quality. These are studios that brought you crazy over-the-top action games like Guilty Gear and Devil May Cry. However, things weren't always this way. In the late 80s and early 90s, through the fog of hairspray and grunge music, these two studios began their journeys to greatness. Arc System Works made a big splash with games like Double Dragon and Ghouls and Ghosts, but faltered a little bit with Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. Seriously, that's a real game. Capcom was already coasting on the success of their biggest franchises, by that point like Street Fighter and Mega Man. But they were always on the lookout for the next big thing, even bigger than Chun-Li's thighs. For some reason, one of those next big things turned out to be a game about a special forces agent who runs around fighting bad guys without pants. Well okay, he might be wearing pants, but look at it. He looks like he's dealing out justice pantsless, like we need the poo. This hero, whose pants are unfortunately the same color as his skin, is the protagonist of Codename Viper, which is also known as Ninjin Aiki? Dead Fox in Japan, and Butt Naked American Shoots People in Italy. Capcom tapped Arc System Works in their infancy to develop the game, and they were all too happy to distance themselves from their work on Michael Jackson's Moonwalk, which is a beat-em-up game where Michael Jackson shoots magic people and can turn a giant robot when he finds his pet chimp Bubbles. I swear to god, this is a real game that exists, even though it sounds like a fever dream. The origins of this game has been kept under lock and key for three decades, but there are rumors, legend tells of an employee for another massive game studio, Namco. This mysterious Namco employee, let's call him Kenny, was caught stealing the Namco boss's food out of the office fridge. It was a box of egg fried rice that had been in the fridge for several days. I didn't think anyone would miss it. Kenny is reported as saying, He was summarily fired and exiled to South America for his crimes, where he was forced to work for various drug cartels as a delivery boy. In his time in South America, Kenny encountered horrifying abominations of science like frog slash human hybrids and reanimated corpses some of whom he had to deliver various drugs to. After several years of this cruel and unusual punishment, Kenny knew he needed a way out. Occasionally, he would receive letters from his former co-workers at Namco. These letters went into depth about upper management and how it had gone drunk with power and made working at Namco a living hell. Thankfully for Kenny, there was also sending tools and supplies with these letters, all of which were being delivered by the Chapacubra that ran Kenny's local post office. Because of the kindness of his workmates, Kenny was able to escape the cartels, leave South America, and make it back to Japan. Now that he was a free man, you might think that Kenny would take this opportunity to start a new life, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. Fueled by a bottomless need for revenge, Kenny used his experience working for Namco to get in with their rival, a game studio with a great reputation and a booming roster of awesome franchises, Capcom. Kenny climbed his way up through the Capcom ladder until he reached a point where he could pitch and lead his own games. And you'll never guess what he pitched. Well, maybe you will, you did click on the video. When Kenny finally got to place of power within Capcom, he was able to exact his revenge that had been years in the making. Now, Kenny is a strange man. He didn't burn Namco to the ground or plant a bomb in his former boss's car to take his revenge. No, Kenny convinced Capcom to make a game, a game called Codename Viper. Kenny plotted the game's entire story all on his own. It would be about a special forces agent named Smith. Kenny Smith. This special agent is sent to South America by Commander Jones to rescue seven other agents who had been kidnapped by drug cartels. As he traveled from one cartel hideout to the next, he has to fight enemies that include human drug dealers as well as frogmen and zombies that get in his way. As you can see, Codename Viper was inspired in quite a few ways by Kenny's experience with Namco and subsequent termination, but the similarities don't end there. Spoilers for a 30-year-old game. But Agent Smith's boss, 
Commander Jones, the one he takes orders from the entire game, actually turns out to be the villain. He plowed the whole time behind the agent's back and sent him into hell to save other agents that he had been torturing. Not unlike Kenny being fired by his boss at Namco and getting word that he had been awful to the people who still worked at the company. Taking things a step further, Kenny also pushed Capcom to hire Arc System Works to develop the game. The studio had a great reputation, although by this point, but that's not completely why Kenny wanted them. You see, Arc System Works was responsible for completing work on a game Namco published, a game called Rolling Thunder. When Arc System Works came on board, Kenny had already planned out the plot for the game, but he also had an idea of how it should work. In the first meeting with Arc System Works, Kenny walked into the meeting room, wheeled in a TV on the cart like they used to in school, plugged in an NES and slapped the Rolling Thunder cartridge into the system. He played the game silently in front of the confused, astonished, and slightly aroused representatives of Arc System Works for four hours, hushing them every time they attempted to communicate. When he beat the final boss, Kenny turned around to the room and said, I want you to do that again. Everyone in the room stood and exploded with rapturous applause, champagne was popped, and contracts were signed to begin work on Codename Viper and make it almost exactly the same as Rolling Thunder. With the final products we have today, you can play Rolling Thunder and Codename Viper side by side and just see how similar they really are. Codename Viper does have a few extra features that set it apart from its inspiration, such as an awesome original story, bigger and more complex levels, and a more nimble protagonist that can shoot and change his trajectory in midair. Kenny didn't even ask for these changes and additions. He literally wanted them to remake Rolling Thunder as a giant middle finger to Namco. But when he discussed the game's story and told them about his experience and where he got the idea from, Arc System Works thought a straight copy with new graphics and characters wouldn't be enough. They also wanted to stick it to Namco, their former collaborator, by making Codename Viper not just better than Rolling Thunder, but better than any game they had made up to that point. In order to do so, they went all out on design and development. Kenny gave a detailed account of his experience in South America, but ARC didn't think it was enough. So to flesh out the understanding of the project, they sent a team of game designers to South America to gain the experience of working for and being tortured by the drug cartels of the area. It was many months of hard work and research, and many of these game designers didn't return home in one piece. But the ones that did were tough, hardened, and ready to make a damn video game. And so they did. Designing the characters was one of the shortest parts of the process, especially when it came to developing the character of Agent Kenny Smith. Real life Kenny walked by the artist's desk as he was working on the character and stopped abruptly. He watched over the artist's shoulder for several minutes and asked a simple question. Where are his pants? The artist began to panic offering apologies and telling him he was working on the character still. Apparently, it's standard practice to draw all video game characters completely naked and then draw the clothes on them. But Kenny wasn't concerned or offended. I love it. He should be pantsless. I want the last thing his enemies to see before they die to be his genitals. That's how it should be, he said. The artist was confused, but relieved Kenny had already revealed himself to be a strange, unusual man and the artist was just happy that he was helping him get back at Namco. And this is Capcom and Arc System Works collaborate on Codename Viper, a game that was created from the fires of revenge. It was released on February 23, 1990 in Japan, and a few months later in March 1990 in the US. The game has largely been forgotten in the intervening 30 years, but Kenny did get his revenge after all, especially at the launch party. He threw after the game's completion, the only thing being served at this party was the food that set him on this path of revenge in the first place. Egg fried rice. I hope you enjoyed this spoof video folks. Codename Viper has been a favorite of mine uh, since I was a kid. The game has always made me laugh with my friends, uh, especially with the character not wearing pants. Seriously, they could have changed the color to not match the face. And... It's really a fun type of Rolling Thunder type of game. Uh, give it a try if you haven't played this game before. Thank you, viewers, for the support you've been giving me um, to my channel. Uh, Pepper thanks you, too. Also, consider giving this video a like if you enjoyed it. 
I'm planning on doing a video with the MetaQuest VR next. Be sure to check it out when it comes out. Thank you, and remember, gaming is your road to adventure. Take care, folks.